But we are live and direct with none other than Antonio Designs. So, Mr. Antonio, I know that you are a very renowned artist in the local Pittsburgh East Bay area scene, the Bay Area entirely. What actually got you started with doing art? And I go back to, uh, you know, being in childhood, growing up, being at home by myself with my mom uh, at work. And so, you know, summertime, that's what I was doing, always doing art, always being creative. Uh, but I had stopped for like, you know, 17 years. So I stopped from like the year 2000 all the way until 2017 when I was uh, playing in a flag football game at, at Pittsburgh High School. And I, uh, you know, thought I was Deion Sanders or something. <laughs> so <laughs> hold on, hold on. You said you stopped, but like, what made you stop? Was you just unmotivated? Uh, did you just want to pursue a different path, like sports, etc.? You know, just getting older and trying to figure out who I was. So started working, uh, turned eighteen, started clubbing, turned twenty-one, started really clubbing. Just you know, just hanging around, um, always keeping it moving, but. Uh, you know, forgot my my passion, which was, you know, my childhood, which was uh, being creative and being in my own zone. So that's the reason why I stopped. You know, you just start growing up and you start doing other things and you see that, you know, nobody's doing it around you. So and you don't see it on you didn't see it on TV or anything like that. So that's the reason. Bro, why I hold on. Let me years. stop you there, because that that's a huge thing. Uh, growing up, we see rappers on TV, right? We see athletes on, on, on TV. But you don't see you don't see artists on TV, even though we're walking around appreciating all forms of art. Right. You look at uh, uh, clothing. Someone designed that there was an artist that designed that. You look at these buildings. They were designed by artists. And, you know, even an architecture is a form right. of artistry so we see artists all around we just don't see uh them being celebrated as a profession what do you think exactly. about that that's that's 100 that's that's honest that's the truth i mean because i didn't i mean all I, all i knew was bob ross um and you know you hear on, like, which, which, which artist did you say bob ross the uh white dude with the that the fro that used to be on pbs okay okay yeah, so that was the only one that I would see on TV, but, you know, that wasn't really art that I was, like, interested in. It didn't catch my eye. So that was just a person on TV just, you know, painting something. Somebody liked it, but it's not, you know, something that made me want to, you know, make it happen. So um, is, is that the gentleman, is his name Bob Voss? Bob Ross, R-O-S-S. Okay, is he your favorite artist and is he your biggest influence in terms of art or is it something like Michelangelo, uh, something on the line of that? Um, I would have to go with a, a New York based artist that passed away back in 88, 89, uh, Jean Michel Basquiat. I actually didn't find out about him till like a couple years ago, but when I seen his art and I saw his story, and it kind of like resonated with me because he didn't paint for people. He did it for himself. He would paint on anything. He would do it on clothes. He would do it on refrigerators. He didn't care what where he painted at. And for me, that's like, that resonated with me the most because it's like, you know, I don't create, you know, I'm not a, I'm not a test rabbit or a test mouse or anything like that. I create for myself. I don't want to sit there and, hey, someone say, hey, can you, can you do this for me or do this? like. A, I'm not about to do tricks like I'm in the circus. So, and that's how he was. He did it for himself. He didn't care what was popular or whatnot. He did what he wanted to do. And he, um, you know, for me, that just kind of like clicked with me. Like, okay, we got the, the same, same like, you know, personality wise, as far as like why you create, what made you create and how you started. He, he started, um, you know, years and years ago when he was a young kid, but he did, have like a um he got into an accident he got hit by a car when he was younger um and i look at it like okay when i tore my achilles tendon that's what made me start doing art because i was sitting at the house by myself nothing to do and that was like my therapy i feel like 
that's kind of like the time that he started also when he got into uh, like a freak accident okay see now you you dropping some jewels because i'm glad that you uh brought up that artist because i've heard of that artist but i didn't i didn't know how powerful his artistry was i'm about to show you one of his works because i'm glad that you said he was your inspiration because when i've seen your artwork I can see that his influence on you because you have a similar style. Let me show you one of his pieces. Right. You can see that? Yeah, I see it. I see it. Doesn't that remind me of you? I mean, I, I that style oh, it says yeah. and all over it. Colors, like I'm all I'm a color, like I, I love a bunch of colors. I use like color psychology. All the colors got all the colors mean something. You know, it's a word behind each color on different color wheels. Um, and you see what he did. He just, you know, he went crazy. He used some bright colors that's going to catch people attention. That's going to have people talking like, why did he do this? Or what does it mean? It's like he knows what he know what it means. He, know he why knows he what it means. Right. Yeah. Because like, if you look at one of the figures, he's smiling. The other one looks like a uh, kind of screw face. So you it, it leaves it up to speculation and interpretation. What his artwork means, you know, and the colors are all over the place. Uh, it can be seen as um, abstract. But I, right. I think this is a beautiful piece right here. And when this piece alone makes me think about your artwork, which is, you know, very prolific. And after the end of this stream, for the viewers that continuously watch, I'll highlight some of Antonio Design's artwork and you'll see the amazing artistry that this young man has. So now let me move on to another uh another question how are you how since it's artists right and there's a community how are other artists in the community with your experience are they more competitive with each other like hey i need to draw something better than antonio designs or draw paint whatever i need to create something better or are they more collaborative like hey uh let's do something together or uh let's uh maybe try using this brush or this canvas or this paint right. do you right. think that the community of artists is more you know collaborative or competitive with one another i think i think it's a mixture because what i did when i first started you know i was around folks that you know i mean they was they was hustling art so it's like boom let me create something and sell it real quick so and then you know you kind of be in that atmosphere but then for me that's like you're not putting no love behind it you're creating something for a dollar sign when you're supposed to be creating something for quality um so over the last few years i mean the way things work it's like you know i kind of like separated myself from the the crowd that's on a hype and and whim and and i just you know not even intentionally just got I just got surrounded by the folks that's like um that's gonna push me um folks that's like you know you ask them a question because I buy art also I'm an art collector so for me I don't look at it like competition I just look at it like how the hell did this person create this because I like it so I, I buy art like I I'll um invest in the artist so you're not if, just an artist you're a fan and supporter of the art as well correct yeah I buy art I got an art collection um, with a few um, um, people that I, that I collected their art and we became friends over these last five years or plus. Um, so like so I said, I just kind of think where, yeah. where, where are you buying this uh, art for, for, from? So a person that wants to get art, do you go to like art galleries? Or are you just finding people online? Are these at art festivals? These are, I buy art from people like, for instance, like we just kind of like, you know, did the same shows back in the day or I saw them at a show, um, got their Instagram, you know, just started talking to them, became friends. And then, you know, I see an art piece that they did and I and I just bought it or I, I commissioned them depending on how, you know, how different their style is. I'll commission them to create me something that I haven't seen before. So it's really just um, 
I haven't really met anybody through social media and then we became friends and then I bought their art. Everybody I met them in person first and then we kind of went from there. Um, you know, so it was, it was organic. Um, so, cause I really like to see the art pieces in person because I want to make sure that the quality is good. I mean, you know, people can get catfished by a picture online, you know, um, physically, but when it comes to art, you want to see it up close and personal to see like, okay, are they painting the sides? How many layers do they have? Like, is it, does it look like it was like really integrated with love? I've got to see all that in person before I even, you know, you know, it's going to look different because the lighting. So I want to make sure that I see it and that I really feel it. I, I got to feel it in person. Yeah, no, I totally understand that. And in terms of art, what is your expertise in art? Are you more of a painter, drawer? Are you creating graphic design? Are you doing a little bit all of the above? Are you designing clothes? What? I'm doing painting uh, clothing um, and canvas. I don't really do canvases for other people. I do that for myself because I don't want to, you know, you look at the art that's in the stores, like I don't want that art. I want something that nobody ever going to have. So I create my own art and I and I have it in my house, and then I um, I'll do jackets for people or whatnot um, that want something custom and, and creative. So I did jackets for um, a few bands, um, a few um, other musicians because I like I like a live music. So my my bloodline is New Orleans. That's my family from. So I love live music. So I like to you know mix in with you know. The, the full art community. So I've just got blessed and lucky to where I've been able to do um, do new logos or whatnot on jackets um, for for a few artists, uh, musician artists. But but that's also crazy because it's like that's how I started off as a kid. When I was in the house, I was cutting up shirts, socks. <laughs> I was cutting up everything, and I was creating art on clo on clothing then. And so, you know, fast forward to like right now, that's kind of how it all uh, progressed. And I'm still doing that now. I feel like I was training. I feel like I was interning then. I feel like I was in preparation. And so that's why that's like my first love doing it right now on fashion because, you know, people going, people love being at festivals and being everywhere and, and not having anything on that nobody else gonna wear. So for me, uh, more people gonna see it and fashion speaks, you know, a lot of um, a lot of words without even without even saying nothing. Yeah, I know. I totally concur with that. And see, I'm the type where if everyone has a particular pair of Jordans, I don't care how fire they are. I don't even want them because I don't want to be looking just, you know, like a clone of everyone else. So I totally respect that when you are seeking out art pieces you want to get something that's specifically unique right not something that you can find in just any mainstream store and right. another point that you made about the the love and the passion right could you just expound a little bit more on how important is it to put love into your art right because if you're only doing it for the money or you're just only doing it because you're bored will you actually produce the best quality content and creation that you possibly can if you don't have love and passion with it i don't, I don't think you will because uh, i look at it like okay artists like myself or i look at it as like artists as far as like musicians it seems like it's just too, with social media, it's too many people on a hype and too many people trying to be seen. So for instance, like when somebody passed away, next thing you know, somebody did a brand new art piece for them already on Instagram. It's like you you, you trying to capitalize on somebody's death to get to fill up your bank account. But at the end of the day, that money gonna be spent real quick. So it's like, why even waste your time? Like I did a Nipsey Hustle one, but I did one I did one like 10 months after he passed away. I wanted to wait till after the hype was over so I can kind of, you know, be creative and, and make sure I, I created something that nobody else was gonna have. And I feel like the art pieces that I did with his, nobody, I haven't seen any of them like that yet. I mean, mine is different cause mine on fashion, but I haven't seen it as far as like 
like how uh creative it is um even when it comes to like music it's like right now it's just a lot of artists out that's right now but a lot of them not gonna be in the rock and roll hall of fame which really re which really counts i mean it's just a lot of people making you know they be in a studio today come out with a song tomorrow now it's a hype and then five years from now they can't even go on tour because that song not even popping up so wow. but then you got artists that you got artists like sir mix a lot i was at the spot i'm like I was in New Orleans last week. I'm like, they playing Sir Mix a lot on the video. It's like, look, listen to the song. It was catchy, but it's still around not right now. But then you got like a bunch of million, you know, a bunch of artists that's just jumping on a hype, creating songs. It's like, what the hell is they talking about? You ain't even, it's like, you might be catchy for right now. You might be catchy for one culture, but why be catchy for one culture? You kind of want to, when it comes to like music and art, it shouldn't even matter what culture you're trying to entertain everybody should love it look at that's why i love prince he, he messed with everybody you go to his concerts everybody was there but you start messing with these hypes and what's going on and all this other craziness it's like nobody really feeling that at all so i kind of see it like the same thing like you got to really put love behind it if you're trying to look for longevity if not that's why i don't even listen to the radio because it's just a lot of stuff on there that I don't really like connect with. And that's why I don't do a lot of like art shows because I don't want to go to like a party. I want to go to a spot where art is really appreciated and it ain't like it, like I said, it, it ain't a hype. Yeah, no, I totally respect that. And when you just said something that was profound, when you said, I don't want to go to a party, it's almost like the people that go to the gym, right? But they going in there looking like they go to a club. You see those chicks that's bending <laughs> over, making sure you, you you see the cakes. You see those dudes over there that's <laughs> flexing in front of the girl. Like, you didn't go to work out. You, you went to go and mingle as a social gathering club. So you're not truly right. focused on working out. And the same thing with the art gallery. People Man. are going there to drink, to holler at other people rather than appreciate because some of that art you want, look and say, Man, this is phenomenal. I want to connect right. with the person that created this versus saying, Oh, she got a big butt and she happens to do art, so I'm a holler at her. That's right. childish and very, right, right. you know, yeah, kind of unproductive. And it's like the way society is right now, like the guy, so Nicholas um, Hernandez, he did my um, my Prince art piece. He um, I commissioned him to do it with friends. He, he got one of the, he's, he got the best style, I think, in the whole Bay Area. And, I, and I'm gonna go ahead and say it out there, in the whole Bay Area, he got the best art creative style. But it's like someone like that is not getting the pop that somebody else that's on a hype is getting. And it's just like music, like it might be, you might see somebody or hear somebody that's playing like acoustic guitar that's real dope, but they not getting that mainstream pop because the mainstream pop is controlled by somebody that's, you know, that's on a hype also. They trying to like sell something real quick. They trying to, they, they basically selling souls to, to make money. And that's how I kind of see it when it comes to art. Cause I know my friend, he, he's, he's, he's dope. He really put all his blood, sweat and tears in his work and you know but then you got other folks that you know that are you know well known and his stuff don't even look like his it's kind of weird to me i'm i'm buy, like i said i buy art and i've been around it for a minute so i know what's good i know what's crap um but for me i'm just trying to figure out like why but sometimes it's kind of like you shouldn't even have to try to figure out that why just be on your own hype and and, and be and uh be passionate and be consistent that's really pretty much what kind of matters the most and mr and i'm gonna i'm gonna do this right here for you that's some dropping of jewels you drop some gems on the people right here so i had to give reverence <laughs> best dunkers didn't even make it to the NBA because maybe they didn't have some other um, uh, prerequisite skills or maybe they just didn't get the opportunity but people will look and say hey because this person's in the NBA they're the best dunker that's what they do with artwork too because this person is in this prestigious art gallery this person is the best artist but if you compare creation to creation is some of these underground street artists that is blowing people 
you know, like right. out of the water. Would you agree with that? 100 percent. Um, it's a bunch of them. The art community is, is, is just so many people. I'm just glad that I'm in the community to like be creative, to meet folks, but also to appreciate it to where it's like I buy it. I mean, other artists is not going to really just invest in other artists like that because it's like, dang, why, why give this person a dollar when they ain't even gave me 50 cents? Like, I don't care. If no artist that I know don't buy any of my stuff. I'm going to buy yours if it's dope because I like dope stuff and I'm not, I, I got to work. So I'm not paying my bills off of art. I'm a, I'm gonna get my bills gonna get paid regardless. Uh, so for me, I'm gonna make sure that I create, you know, and put 110 percent in it. And if I only get 97 cent, 90 per seven cent back, I'm cool with that because it wasn't about that for me. It's it's bigger. So I'm gonna help, you know, I'm a I'm gonna help and buy somebody's art if I'm really feeling it. And I'm not gonna buy, I don't buy st art just because I know you. I gotta really be feeling it. Like I'm not, I'm not, I mean, it, for me, it's like, I don't wanna pretend. And I don't wanna buy something that's, that just because I know somebody. When it comes to art, other stuff is different. But when it comes to art, like I really appreciate it 100%. So I really gotta buy something that I'd be like, damn, I can't believe it's mine. And so, that's, yeah, no, that's I, I, I totally, I totally respect that. So let me ask you this about artists because you've you've sold art before, right? Uh, whether it be fashion art or canvas paintings right. and drawings, correct? Right, right. Okay, so when people are asking you for art, do are people pretty receptive to the price? that you give or are people trying to haggle and lowball? I ask because in every other industry, whether it be me producing music or me doing fashion or being a mechanic, people will try to say, hey, I know your price is this, but could you do it for this? Is that same type of haggling done in the art world? It's done. I just I just haven't had to feel it um, because when I sell my, like if, I, if somebody want me to do a jacket, I'll take the first payment to start it and then I don't even get the next payment until I'm done. I don't even want the next payment until I'm done because it's going to take me at least a month because I'm going to need enough, a month to research. I mean, I'm going to need a few days to research it. I need to figure out like what colors I want to put together. I really want to like sit there and figure out I might not start it till week three, um, but I don't want to get their money and have them wait. Like I don't want to have all their money. So I just do a first payment to start and then they don't have to pay me until I'm done. So if it take me two months to, to get done, they don't have to pay me until two months. So that's that's the way I do it, because I don't want I don't want to have to have somebody waiting for me when I'm in my creative zone and my zone might take longer than expected. But the quality is going to be dope and you're not going to feel like, OK, I paid this person. I'm sitting around waiting on my package. And are you pretty uh, communic, you know, in good communication with them and saying, hey, look, I know I said a week, but it's probably going to take a few extra days or. Yeah, how, how so do I'll always do them? always do a month, I always just say it's going to take a month. That way, that first week, you know, life might happen. I can't get to it. The first week, I might knock out a, a good percentage. The second week, I might not touch it. The third week. I'm um, um, touching that paint the fourth week I'm finalizing it and then boom you can have it so you need that much time but if somebody say hey can you create this jacket for me and have it done next week I don't I'd rather have somebody else do it because I'm not gonna I'm not gonna create something that fast I don't have that much I don't have that much time on my hands to be creating like that like some days like I don't sometime I don't even create for like maybe like two months but I'm sitting there looking online, looking at research. I'm going to art shows, getting inspired. I'm looking at I'm looking at fabric on clothing and seeing like, okay, those colors look good together. Let me throw it on some art. Like I'm that's how like that's how I do it. So I'll be doing like um, you know, a so bunch of So you take it deeper than just being the artist, right? You're looking at being yeah. almost an artist, a designer, you know, a, a consultant. You're doing a little bit of everything in terms of the hat you wear in this art game, right? 100 percent that's the that's the best way for me like i'm driving right now and i'm seeing like how green the trees look or i'm like or i might see somebody's i might see somebody's shoes or i might see see a purse so i might see something where it's like a abstract maybe like a um, african design 
And I'd be like, okay, I see the, the African design. You're getting Let ideas pretty much from everywhere exactly. in the environment, right? My, my phone got so many screenshots in it, I have to clear out my space. <laughs> and you know what, uh, Antonio Designs? I know that uh, you are on limited time, so I'm gonna put up one graphic and we can go through it and then you can just quickly tell me if you agree with it and what are your thoughts on that. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this up. All right. And this says, how to support the artists you like. One, buy their work. Two, share their work. Proper, share their work with proper credit with others. So, so that's the whole caveat, not just share their work, share their work with proper credit with others. Three, tell others about their work. Four, give them some time and support so they can make more art. Do you agree with those four things? And if so, why or why not? I agree with it 100%. Like my friend, Nick, like I say, I, I, I bought this art. I, I share so many people art so much. I don't need them to share mine. That's that's the that's the good part about me. I guess you know I'm just a different breed. Like it's not a competition, but I share their art because I feel like you know people need to see it, and it's not going to be you know I'm not trying to not share it because it's like oh man they might see their art piece and not pick me. Like I'm gonna get blessed regardless. So you know sharing somebody art and investing in their art and um, <clears throat> giving them time or whatnot support. I mean that's that's I agree with that 100. percent what about um, the proper credit part? I would say so. So it's crazy because it's like Picasso. I think it was Picasso said, great artists copy, good artists copy, great artists steal. And people got a reference. They got every art piece out there was referenced by something. No, no matter what. No one probably, no one that I know of has created anything, you know, that, that they haven't seen before. Everything was referenced from something. So you may reference it depending on like where it's, what it was or how detailed or how obvious it is that it was, that it came from something else. Um, but you know, depending on, you know, depending on what it is you do. Um, but you don't have to all the time if you, if you just kind of saw something like, okay, I saw a pose and okay, I'm gonna put that on an art piece. Like you're not gonna do that. But it just really just depends when it comes to that. But if something belongs to someone, like if it's obviously theirs, yeah, you tag them. You you let it be known that it was there, that it was their art piece. Um, and you know, you don't just take a picture of something and see their name right there, and then don't tag the person if you know who they are. I feel like that's you know, I mean, that's kind of hating a little bit. You know, it's, yeah. it's a reason you think why that's somebody, disrespectful. Yeah, it's a reason why somebody's doing it. You know, um, but you know, I feel like I re I try to reference mine each and every time. No matter what, if I if I can't find the name, I'll I'll figure it out. Um, you know, because sometimes you pull in a name on social media, you can't pull it up because it might be you know a few other things with that name. But I try to make sure that I give credit each and every time um, because I know I would want the credit back. And it also says give them time and support so they can make more art. And that kind of alludes to the point that you said you usually take what a month or so to make right so if somebody wants an antonio design piece you gotta give him time to make the art right because he could probably rush it in two weeks but then it's not gonna be the best quality and then now they're gonna be complaining that oh man he gave me a you know below average piece and i know you got a, your reputation on the line so rather than you know give something in poor quality or diminished quality You'd rather just take that full month so that you deliver something phenomenal. Is that correct? I agree with that 100%. You couldn't have said it no better. And cool, you know, Mr. Antonio Designs, this has been real. We're going to have to lock you in for another episode. But just let the people know in your closing remarks, you know, where one, where they could find your artwork and two, any inspirational phrases or sayings that you can say for someone that was just like that young Antonio that said, hey, uh, I know art is my passion, but I just took a hiatus. 
So anything inspirational that you can say to them to to let them know to keep going on their art journey and let the people know where they can find you. Man, so uh, social media, Antonio Designs, that's Antonio with two T's. Um, I don't have a website. I I don't really want (laughs) to, you know, create all that stuff. So I just got an Instagram, send me a DM. Uh, My number's on there. Um, I also like to, um, you know, write quotes or whatnot. So one of the quotes that I wrote is like, um, we're all born with a purpose. It's up to us to figure out the year is activated. And I feel like we all have a purpose. We all have a have a dream. We all have, you know, a goal in life. And it's up to you to figure out when you're going to tap in with it. Sometimes we might have to go through things just to to get through stuff and to go through experiences just to even realize like, okay, this is where I'm supposed to be at. I feel like that's where I'm at now. I feel like everybody reads chapters in life at different different stages. And it's up to you to figure out like what chapter you in. And you can't compare yourself to other people. If somebody has a Benz and they're a manager at the job, it's not meant for you to have a Benz and be a manager of the job at that time. You gotta get there at your own particular time. Um, I feel like a lot of us, we kind of compare ourselves and our situations to others. And then we kind of feel like we're not doing nothing with our life. Um, but you know, you can't worry about stuff like that. You can't worry about why that relationship didn't work. You can't worry about why you didn't get that job. You got to realize that you're going through tests and the test becomes a testimony. And um, once you realize that life become hella easier. I ain't stressed in more than 10, 15 years. I would say 10 years because I don't, I don't, I don't worry about stuff that I don't have. I don't worry about stuff that's taking place. I just keep it moving. Man, that was some powerful sayings that you said, Antonio Designs. We're going to have to do this again. I'm definitely yeah. going to shout out your art. I'm At the end of this video, the people that stay tuned, I'll be highlighting some of Mr. De- Antonio Designs art. So you'll get to see just how truly artistic and amazing his creations are. It's been real. And we'll do this sh- again shortly. Thank I you for tuning you. in. Appreciate you, bro. No problem. Peace.